Well, good morning from a busy day at Tokyo Disney Sea. Uh, today, the, the soft opening, I would say, of the Dreaming of Fantasy Springs event. Uh, meanwhile, we have uh, another one of our reporters, Hiroki, over at Disneyland. Today is the soft opening of uh, Donald's Quacky Duck Kingdom, um, and uh, also the uh, Space Mountain, the final ignition event too, as well. It's a busy day, busy couple days here. Um, kind of a crazy morning. I'm a little sweaty from running to the park and uh, running into the park. And um, so the way it worked today is, if you happen to come on like an event kickoff day, and there's special merchandise, that's going to be handled via something they call standby pass, which is, which is essentially um, a boarding group for merchandise, is what I would call it. Um, so you'll see those options in your app. You have uh, DPA, which is Disney Premier Access, which is your paid fast pass, like your paid individual lightning lane, essentially. Um, then you have the priority pass, which may or may not stay, um, which is basically your old school free fast pass, um, but the digital way. So kind of more like Max Pass at Disneyland was handled. Uh, and then the next option is Standby Pass, which could be for a number of things. I've had it for meet and greets. I've had it for stores. I've had it for restaurants. It really just depends when you're coming. I think it's always worth checking just to make sure you didn't miss something that you want access to. But today they're handling the merchandise for Dreaming of Fantasy Springs via that system. Um, so I had to get a Standby Pass for the Emporio, which is their version of the Emporium at Disney Sea, And we got that. Um, 11.35, and then the, the Harbor Greeting Show will kick off today as well, which we'll attempt to show you probably from a distance because I, um, you know, with the shopping when it is and all of that, I can't stand there all day. The first one's not till 1 o'clock. People are already camping out. I don't, that's, that's a bit too much for characters waving on a barge. But we will show you it um, from a distance. Either way, it's from a distance. That's what I understand about Harbor Greetings is they're from a distance anyway. Like, you're on the water, but they're still... Characters are out in the lagoon, they don't come, you know, to the dry side of land. So it doesn't really matter, but um, a lot of restaurants aren't open this early at Disney Sea. You could go to Mama Biscotti, the bakery. Um, I ended up walking pretty far into the park and then was like, well, what am I going to eat right now? Um, I started doing mobile orders for some of the Dreaming of Fantasy Springs food items, but a lot of those don't start till 10 or 10.30. We'll start doing some of those. Um, but one of my favorite snacks at Disney Sea is the chicken leg. There is a um, spicy chicken like you could get. It, they have it at the cookhouse here in Lost River Delta. I will tell you in another couple of minutes that will have a line that will be long the rest of the day. My trick is um, just across the water, still in this port, still in Lost River Delta, is Miguel's El Dorado restaurant. They have it as well and typically have a shorter line. They also have mobile order. so. Um, you may want to go there to get it, but it's it's a pretty good little quick meal. I certainly think it's better than a turkey leg. Uh, nice. It is a dark meat chicken leg. Um, I also got, of course, my spicy harissa sauce that I always get to spice these dishes up and a soft drink this morning. And that's going to be the start to my day until restaurants start opening in about 40 minutes. And then we'll start cracking on some of this food. We'll go shopping, which I'm sure will be a disaster. <laughs> with all the resellers here today. Uh, and then we're going to see this new Harbor show. So at certain popcorn carts, if you get a regular box starting today, you get a Dreaming of Fantasy Springs popcorn box. Peter Pan and Tinkerbell. Anna and Elsa. We got Rapunzel on this side. And there's sort of a, a very disney sea thing happening at the top. Kind of ties a little bit into Fortress Explorations with the Zodiac and constellations and all of that very very cool i like how even though it's ip they're kind of tying into the theme of existing disney sea a famous japanese composer made this score and demanded it be played at a certain volume which is why it's like the loudest background music in any disney park in the world fun fact we're going to take a look at the decor the magical springs lead to the world of fantasy springs or fantasy enchants you. It's using the same word a lot in one sentence. The word springs is twice, fantasy's twice. Not my favorite tagline. So um, usually the Aquasphere Plaza just has, um, there's the earth in the middle, and then around the earth are the phases of the moon, which are made out of stone, you see. And then between those, we have these decals that were added.
Uh, this one's gonna be Peter Pan, one of the areas in Fantasy Springs. Let's say the Magical Spring, it says that again. The Magical Springs lead to the world of Peter Pan where fantasy empowers you to fly. Let's see Rapunzel's next. Let's go to the Rapunzel one. Of course, kids, remember Disney was teaching you that uh, among the most important things uh, between the phases of the moon are the phases of intellectual property. The magical springs lead to the world of Tangled, where fantasy brings romance to life. The people standing on the corner of this. Let's see if I can get them to move. Here. No, no social awareness. No matter how polite a country you go to is, people in theme parks will always lack a self-awareness. And I'm not going to ask. I'm not that guy. It's, if you don't know you're standing on a photo op, I can't help you. Uh, all right, here's Frozen. The magical springs lead to the world of Frozen. Where fantasy ignites your emotions. Oh, very fancy. I assume they're going to repeat now. Those are all the themed areas. It's Frozen, Tangled, and Peter Pan. So here we have the Fantasy Springs, Dreaming of Fantasy Springs logo again. I want to get one of these stickers. Hold on. There we go. I got it. And Nana will be very proud that I asked. So there is a sticker that you can ask cast members up in this front section of the park for. Here it is. Oh, the lighting's terrible right here. I'll turn into the sun. You guys can see better. There we go. You get this cool little sticker if you ask. The Sumi Masen is the magic word if you're an English-speaking person coming to Japan. That will open all the doors. That and Arakato Gozaimasu will open all the doors you need. Excuse me and thank you. You get a sticker. Very cool. Anyway, back to our little tour. Yeah, it looks like they're going to repeat again. So let's take a walk up to the entrance. The entrance has banners and such that weren't here the other day. Donald's not being very kind. Donald's meeting on one of the photo ops. See, Mickey's got his own little cordoned off area. He's being very polite as opposed to Donald. Donald has his own city at, at Tokyo Disneyland right now. It's not enough for Donald. He's got to take up the Rapunzel photo op. So here is the entrance underneath Hotel Miracosta. That's what's above. Hold on. The camera was a little crooked. I haven't used the stabilizer in a few weeks. I'm getting rusty. She's got the plush already. Um, my shopping time's coming up in like 45 minutes, I think. Let's pull off to the side to not be in the way. And there we go. And then there are these side banners. Epic adventures, heartwarming tales, and romantic journeys await those who set foot fantasy springs where every moment is filled with enchantment and delight. Come and immerse yourself in a captivating world of new beginnings and let your imagination soar. The magic is here waiting to be discovered. And there's going to be some banners actually under here too. Some banners and some flowers. The way that's focusing almost looked like there was snow on Prometheus. Peter Pan and Tinkerbell. There's these really pretty flowers that aren't always here either. Peter Pan and Tinkerbell. If we go to this side, we got Rapunzel. I'm going to go around people to not be in the way. There we go. Here's a 
a lot of zigzagging to get out of people's photos. We'll try our best to be courteous to everyone. This, I love this one because it's Mark's art. This is a Mark Davis picture of Tinkerbell. And then uh, the merchandise line is kind of in the way of Anna and Elsa. We can get the idea. We can go see the big ones. Still, luckily there's bigger versions of these. So it's, oh, that's a line for the window. There's a window with a countdown. Oh, I'm gonna have to wait in that line to take a picture of a window. The magic of Tokyo Disney. Everyone wants to take a picture of a window. So get in line for it. I thought that was the merchandise line. That's actually the line for when you have your standby pass time to go into Emporio. So yeah, you see there's bigger versions of these banners out here. So I can show you guys the Anna and Elsa in the big form. Actually, they're the same size. No, those ones in the walkway are definitely a little smaller, I think. But yeah, that's the extent of the decor. It's not a lot. I mean, this isn't a huge event, but uh, now, it's, now it's time to go shopping. Enough of these vlogs, and this is going to be nothing new to any of you, but um, yeah, we are waiting in a line and a long one to take photos and video with the Fantasy Springs Countdown window. Uh, the cool thing is it does change every day, though, so there's a little screen in there, today being 59 days until the opening. taking a step back to show you the mass hysteria right now so a couple people deep at each merchandise rack luckily they have them everything spread out in a couple places but uh i was gonna try to film in here and show you stuff but i'll just have to show you stuff after i shop because it is nuts and it's pretty normal for a merchandise release so this is a thing they will all compare each and every one until they feel like they found the perfect one so it's not that it's busy in here. People are just taking five minutes to paw through all of these. Well, this is pretty neat. This is the postcard set and they put it in this sort of displayable cardboard. You could stand this and display all four postcards if you'd like. I know someone asked for merchandise prices in the last show, so it's pretty cheap. I mean, it's four postcards. 1200 yen was that like eight or nine bucks us something like that sorry my conversions are always going to be wrong but it's the these are the four attraction posters for the four attractions if you really like the posters they also have a four pin and set they're photo pins they're not super detailed but they are the four attraction posters nonetheless that's 4800 um, they also have them all as tiny notepads if that floats your boat. A tiny notepad. And here's what the pages look like. They look like the poster, just, you know, faded. So you can write on it. This is, was this cheap too? 1200 With the logo, there is a logo pin, which is the drop of water, because all the, you know, this backstory is all of the stories come from the magical spring. That's 1200 also. Uh, there's then the logo as a mag. There we go. That's better quality. Let me show you the pin again now that the camera decided to function. No, it just really doesn't like the pin. Come on. There it goes. Still learning the new camera. There's the pin. Then there's the logo as a magnet. That's thousand yen then they have a i don't know who on earth would use this 
giant metal keychain. Number one, this would get all scratched. Number two, it's so big and heavy. Massive. It has the drop of water too, though. That's fourteen hundred. Showing you things that they put them away. And then I need to get a locker because there's too much. Um, of course, if you bought postcards and you want to store them somewhere, not in that. I mean, that display is incredible. Um, but this is a postcard book. It's actually a little box that looks like a book to put your postcards in. And it comes with one Fantasy Springs logo postcard as well for 1900 But it's this cute little book for Fantasy Springs. Put that away. Um, they also have the posters as drawstring bags. This is always a thing here, these little pouches. Always a thing here. This is 2800 These are a little expensive, honestly. They're very pretty, though. Uh, then we've got one of my favorite things is Tomika. These are made by Tomi. You may know that name in America. They make die-cast cars and toys and things like that. Uh, so this is a vehicle they do all the time. This is the Tokyo Disney Sea Transit Steamer. This is sort of the railroad for this park. It's a boat that goes around uh, between all the ports and transport. And it has a special, this isn't a real overlay they're doing, but um, on the toy, at least, there is a Fantasy Springs overlay. This is 1,800 yen. A really cool box. Yeah. And then there's another keychain. This one is a book. metal little book a more reasonable keychain size uh, you can put a photo in it it looks like or is that a mirror I have no idea sometimes I just can't think uh, that's 1900 I know my collecting's kind of insane but this is this is kind of my bread and butter a countdown event to a new land in a park there's some historical significance to it then there are plush of Mickey and Minnie in there fantasy springs outfits which we'll see in the uh harbor greeting show later today here's mickey look at the look at the detailing on here look at this look at that stitching these are amazing they're not super big they're called they call them plush badges because you wear them like a badge so attached to mickey's head there's a clothespin but then also uh this thing so uh these are expensive because this is what everyone here buys. As I just showed you, they were pawing through them because they needed the perfect one. These are 2600 each. So they're like 20 bucks each. It's on the expense side. They're really well made, though. I just, I know Americans will be like, they're kind of small for $20, but they're made really, really well, though. I love them. They're so, Mickey and Minnie are so cute. I'm excited to see the actual costumes today. That'll be neat. I am now in my spot, which I am in two hours ahead of the actual show, which is pretty normal for here. This is actually somewhat low demand if I was able to get front row two hours before the show. But nonetheless, uh, two hours to go until the Harbor reading, which I assure you will not be worth the wait. Um, it will be cute, but it will really just be characters waving on a barge, which is what these things always are. So. But it has to be filmed, so here I am. Welcome, everyone. In just a few minutes, here at Mediterranean Harbor, we will proudly present Fantasy Springs Special Greeting. New adventures await at Fantasy Springs, where magical springs lead to a world of Disney fantasy. Join Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, and their friends on an enchanting journey to a fairy tale world. Fantasy Springs Special Greeting will begin in just a few minutes. Thank you.
Grant Zambini Brothers in Mediterranean Harbor. It's sort of a pizza place. I use the word pizza very loosely. In a future vlog, we'll come eat the regular food here, much to my chagrin. Uh, but regardless, um, we're here. It's the first day of Dreaming of Fantasy Springs. We're going to try some Dreaming of Fantasy Springs stuff. Uh, so, uh, Zambini Brothers has a dessert. It's a berry mousse. I didn't get the set. Um, they do have a set that has a spaghetti seafood carbonara, but I don't. Nothing about that says Fantasy Springs. Anything. It doesn't even say what movie that's supposed to be. I don't know who would eat a seafood carbonara. So I'm not bothering with that. The dessert has a Fantasy Springs medallion, which is as close to Fantasy Springs as we're getting at this restaurant, I guess. So let's try the berry mousse. No, I won't save the medallion. Chocolate that's been in a dessert already can't be saved. I know I save a lot of garbage, but look at that, there's three layers there. Oh my god. That's amazing. So it's like a really tart gelatin over a berry mousse, and then I think it was essentially like a cheesecake on top? No. It's a really light vanilla mousse on top. So it's a vanilla mousse, a little bit of yellow cake, then a berry mousse, and then, well, it's not, I, maybe it's gelatin. If not, it might just be a raspberry, like pie filling kind of deal, a raspberry cream. It's actually excellent. It's all perfect. It's the right amount of tart, the right amount of sweet. Um, there's a lot of good texture in the bite because you're switching between the cake and the gelatin and the mousse. Um, a lot of variation there. I hate to say this, this is a 7 out of 7. I would absolutely get this again. I like that fresh raspberry flavor from the puree at the bottom. It's damn good. Um, so they do have one of the sparkling drinks here. Uh, this one is going to be the Peach and Lemon. Peach and lemon, my two favorites. I'm gonna give it a stir. They didn't tell me to, but I'm gonna do it. Peach and lemon sparkling ale. Although, few and far between how many of these I've ever disliked. It's another success. I hate to say it. Um, Tastes like a lemon soap, right? So it's less sweet than a lemonade. It's gonna be a little stickier than if you had like lemon seltzer or lemon soda water, whatever you wanna call it. So it's like, it's, in sweetness, it's between a lemon seltzer water and like a lemonade, I would say. There's definitely a hint of peach, but I mean, it's, it's real lemony top to bottom. The chunks might be peach. The, like, gelatinous chunks, I think, is where the peach flavor really comes in from. If you like tart, lemony sodas, lemony, things of that sort, I think this will be a winner for you. I'd give it a five. Also, I wasn't sure if I was going to like the drink or that, so I got a safety item, which is going to be the little green mochi, which come in three. One is strawberry, one is vanilla, and one is chocolate. They're, you've probably seen them before. They're like the most ubiquitous snack in the park. They're relatively cheap. They take a great photo. There's nothing not to like about them. They're like, they're, especially if you come in the summer months, they're very refreshing. It's nice to have something that cold. Honestly, um, cold, very flavorful, like all those flavors, that vanilla, the, the vanilla cream, chocolate, trouble, all very rich. Um, highly, highly recommend it. So on my medallion quest, I found a couple more generic ones I've never seen before. Again, this art seems like it's super old. It's 
like there's always so many seasonal events that these regular designs never get to come back. So there's just the temple from Indiana Jones, Lost River Delta, and then the SS Columbia. I have Duffy and Lena Vell, of course, but um, I need Indy and I need the SS Columbia. What I love about the new iPhone is the beautiful transitions between lenses. Look at that, isn't that great? There it comes. Well, you knew what I was going for. Will it work if I do this? Can I do this? Nope. Beautiful, well done. This is Miguel's El Dorado Cantina, which is the name in theme parks that bothers me the most because in the world of theme parks, we have all these cutesy fun names, right? And no one was like, Miguel El Dorado, Miguel's El Dorado, why don't we make it Miguel Dorado? You know, like I, I understand what El Dorado is. I, I know that folks, but like the, the opportunity to create a man named Miguel Dorado was, was sorely missed. If I ever, for some reason, get to be part of creating a theme park or build my own on the world's smallest budget, I will create a Miguel Dorado and, and correct this problem. Miguel's has the weirdest menu, right? Like the the mixed greens, the tortilla chips, that makes sense. And so does like the taco thing, but then they have churros and beer and the gyoza dog this year. And then a pork roll and a chicken pie. Like none of this adds up. It's the weirdest counter service menu. If I can further explain why I think it's weird, these are these are technically like park snacks. These are usually in service windows. Like the, the chicken thigh was always here. But the gyoza dog's a mysterious island thing. The pork roll, the pork rice roll is not a thing that belongs here. Like again, there's a couple things that belong. And then just some french fries, churros. I don't know, weird Duffy desserts. Makes no sense. What I like about eating at <laughs> counter service at Tokyo Disney is it's an opportunity to shop. That's my favorite thing. So like you can, I bought that taco thing. It's in the Duffy wrapper, but you could add a bunch of stuff on. So I added on a lunch bag. My mother, so short, long story short, my mother really likes Lena Bell. So all the stuff I buy here is the Lena Bell stuff. So for come find spring, they have a Lena Bell lunch bag. Um, I got this for me. I think my mother has this already, but there's a candy case. It comes with like fake M&Ms with Duffy character heads on them. Lena Bell case, and then there's the bottle, which is adorable. But that's my favorite thing. You can get to shop for merchandise when you buy food. So a quick recap on our day. Um, the kickoff of the event, we got to see the decor, right? Um, we got our free sticker. We got to shop for merchandise. We saw the Harbor Greeting, which I told you uh, was not going to be much, and it wasn't. Um, I do like the port theme song a lot, though. I li really like that. But I also like all the old ones. They're worth a listen if you can find them online. I, all the, they're all super cheesy. These 2001 Tokyo Disney Sea port theme songs. They're they're my favorite. So I, I like that it. This new one's che just as cheesy, and it fits in really well with the group. Um, if you want to watch the full thing, that's on the YouTube channel. I couldn't put the full thing in this, otherwise it would demonetize this entire video. And sorry, I don't want to demonetize my entire day. Disney Sea, you got to pay for this trip somehow. Um, but uh, for dinner, what I'm doing is, I wanted to try this. It looked weird and interesting, but Miguel's has the tortilla sandwich, which is chili beans, cabbage, guacamole, multigrain salad, and corn chips in a purple tortilla. It just sounded weird and interesting. I added the fries onto it, and uh, yeah, I got a drink with it too. And so the, the total for all that was 4,360 yen because I got the lunch case and the drink bottle with the two, so that's like a 30-something dollar counter service meal because I bought merchandise with it. Um, separately, you can get a soda for 360 yen. Uh, that colorful chocolate case I just showed you is 1,200 yen, so like nine, $10 uh, as well. So, but let's 
let's end our day on the weird purple tortilla sandwich. You know what? Look, I've never liked the salads in these parks. I bet that that salad upstairs is good then, the, the, malt, the salad they have separately. I think if you're vegetarian, this is this is a pretty decent counter service item. Um, it's not going to change your life. It's not going to be something you want to remember. But I will tell you, it's hard to find stuff to eat in this park with special dietary needs. This is pretty good. It's like just a... I mean, in America, it would be the most mediocre edible salad in a tortilla, and that's what it is here. But again, stuff like this is so hard to come by here that I think there are some people that would have this and be like, wow, finally I found something I could eat that's not salad in a cup, um, which is a thing here. They do have a very plain salad in a cup. Um, but anyway, I digress. Um, if I had to give it out of seven, I'd give it a four. The fact that it exists, it seems like a, it's a healthier option than a lot of stuff in this park. I know I got french fries with it, but you know, it's as weird as it looked upstairs. I'm glad I tried it. I would, if I'm having a day where I feel like I've eaten too many park snacks and I need something filling that's not going to be awful, I would, I would come get this again. And then, then again, those of you with dietary needs, I, I would highly recommend this. Onto the Mermaid Lagoon medallion machine. I think I need all three of these. You know, there's never been a time I've, I've been here where I haven't thought that this view is insane. The, the layering, the detail, like it's, this has gotta be what New York looked like in like the 1910s. It has to be. Um, Cause there's like little remnants I remember of older buildings you know, from growing up in New York, and it, it, it just feels correct. Um, but what an insane park. We're going to do a lot of vlogs. Or, because all these events kicked off, I didn't really get a chance to do more standard vlogging from Disney Sea. but we'll certainly do, like, a full walk around and, and, and start to dive into some of the details and such once we get through this busy period with all these events kicking off, and certainly before Fantasy Springs opens, because then we're going to be spending a lot of time back there but don't worry that that's uh, that's coming soon the first thing we're going to cut to is i actually reviewed one of the dreaming of fantasy springs items uh several days ago the start of the festival i'm gonna let the electric railway go by uninterrupted by me talking because it's beautiful So cool. Love, love electric railway. Uh, anyway, um, we're going to show two things. Number one, I had um, the other sparkling fantasy springs drink uh, that's available at, um, I don't know where else it's available at, but it's available at uh, a Dockside Diner over here in American Waterfront. Separately, um, I don't know if we're going to cut here or not. Uh, the Dreaming of Fantasy Springs event is going to begin on April 9th. It's sort of a preview or countdown event. It's a Fantasy Springs opening here in the park. That's, of course, the giant, you probably know this already, but the giant mega land that's going to open in this park on June 6th, uh, which includes realms for Frozen, Peter Pan, and Tangled, um, which Peter Pan has two rides. The other realms each have one, so four new rides in one land. And don't worry, that's mostly why I've taken up residence in Japan to be here for that. Um, but they've started this countdown event, and, and ahead of the countdown event, actually, counting down to the countdown event, some of the food and beverage has started. And I'm going to try to find real quick. Let me see what the menu says about it. I think this is the Peter Pan-inspired drink. I think that's the story on it. I assume based on the colors. Uh, so it's a grape and kiwi sparkling drink. 
They do a lot of these. There's a ton of specialty sparkling sodas. Um, they're all, usually they're fantastic. There was a popcorn one, la one year. It was unbelievable. It was topped with a donut. It was for Halloween one year. Uh, one of my favorite things I've ever had in any park. And there's, there's jelly in here, kiwi jelly. It's great. It's, you know, you would think it would be super tart. It's not. It's not that sticky sweetness we get from specialty cocktails in the U.S. There's no, there's no alcohol in this, mind you. It's kiwi forward. I, 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 yeah, there's grape in there, sure. Um, but again, nicely balanced, refreshing fun presentation, a very cute cup. I'm going to take this cup home. It is a thin plastic cup, so it's not meant to be a souvenir, but I keep these because I like to collect them. That's good. We've got to give it a seven. I'll give it a five. Five out of seven. I like the jelly in there. Here we go. we got a shuriki uh, medallion also frozen and believe a lot of you probably don't know who Shriki Utundu is, but if you've been on this Tower of Terror, you know. We'll talk about him on another vlog, but I did get him on a souvenir medallion. I also got an April. They do this too. I think there's three or four machines that have like a monthly design. And I always get whatever months I'm here for. You know, it's a cute way to remember when you were here. I like the dated ones. I even It doesn't even necessarily matter if I'm crazy about the design. Like, I'm not the world's biggest Frozen fan, but I like that they mark your trip. Now it's really like I'm home. For those that don't know, the subway literally uh, used to go. It's, I mean, my parents still live in that house. The subway goes behind the house and over the street we lived on. Uh, Matthews Avenue in the Bronx, so it's a little, it's a little bit of home for sure. So it turns out there are actually very few medallion machines across this park. I didn't realize that. Like, I don't think there's one in Port Discovery, so the Port Discovery medallion is here. Uh, most of them are up here in the front in Mediterranean Harbor. Um, there's way more machines, it feels like, at Disneyland. Like, Disneyland, you could spend a good couple of hours just collecting medallions. Definitely less machines in this park. Now we're getting medallions with the years, which are kind of generic. These are not Disney Sea costumes or anything fancy. Just, just characters with the years. We're waiting for, there's a nighttime projection thing counting down to Fantasy Springs, which I'm now waiting for. I need to get to bed early tonight as I got an early day. Uh, based on how the preview day went, I'm gonna need to be at Disneyland at like six in the morning to make sure I get a shopping pass and stuff for Donald's Quacky Duck City. It's that bad and a parade spot for that matter too. Um, but while I'm waiting, I'm gonna put medallions away in my souvenir medallion book, like a big child. They do have a cuter one than this, but I own it already. So this was a design I don't have. I was like, well, if I'm gonna buy a couple of these this day, I should get the books I don't have. I think this is a new thing for the Fantasy Springs preview. Peter Pan is just frolicking around Aquasphere Plaza. Oh, there's Ariel. Here he goes. I believe Ariel has been a character that comes out here from time to time. Peter, Peter is not. We saw Rapunzel the other day, which we know was new and added for this too.
Fantasy Springs monorail ticket, and you know, it's time to go home. Uh, the, the countdown moment was cute. I wouldn't wait for it, but know that the first time it happens at 6.30. I assume it's every couple minutes. Maybe it's every 30. I have no idea, but I got to be up early tomorrow. So thanks for watching. Hit that like button. Please subscribe for more, and uh, we'll see you real soon.